Okay, uh, and then this one is going to be important, especially important in what follows, and this is the product of two sets. Involves a new idea, and that is you can collect elements of sets together. So uh, the product here is going to be a pair, little a, little b, such that little a is in big A, and, and, not little b, little b <laughs> is in big B. Okay. Now, um, this is a new idea. This is uh, an ordered pair. It's not a set, per se. It is an ordered pair where order matters, because you want to indicate the first thing is in A and the second thing is in B. Okay? Product. Excellent. So now we want to come to the notion of a, a relation. What is a relation? When I say the word relation, what do you think of? What do you think of? Malus, when I say the word relation, what do you think of? Good. How do things interact with one another? Okay. So, for instance, I might say that uh, uh, Malus is the sister of Paul, which may or may not be a true statement. Okay, that's a relation, right? Or John is the father of Mary. That is a relation. Okay, so uh, these are relations that involve two objects, and so we'll refer to it as a binary relation. Although if you talk about a relation without saying what it is, you often mean binary. So we might give the relation a name. We'll call it R. And here's a, a new way to describe a relation. It's probably going to be new for some of you. We'll describe it as a subset of another object. Let's say a subset of A cross B, the subset of a product, such that something is true. Well, actually, no, sorry. It's a su it is a subset. I ha it, it, there'll, there'll be some some uh, uh, relations that determine what actually lives in the subset. But um, we normally write this as follow follows. So if A and B are in R, we often write it like this. We'll write uh, A, R, B. This is a statement that basically says the pair AB are in this subset. So let me give you an example, the relations that you are very familiar with. So I might have the relation A is an ancestor of so this is the relation is an ancestor of uh, it's a relation on what set? Well, it's the relation on well, I'm, I usually compare two people when I talk about ancestors. So this is the product of the set of people. Okay? With me? Uh, L, the relation to like somebody, is also a relation on P cross P. It's a different one, right? Because you might not like your mother. Okay? But if you look at the set of all people, and you look at ordered pairs of people, I might ask, is the pair Bonnie and Jenny in the relation A? Does Bonnie A Jenny? No. But does Bonnie L Jenny? <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> the right, that's the right answer in this audience, right? Okay. Okay, uh, here's another example. Um, S is a sibling of, is a relation also on people cross people. 
Actually, you know, the like relation doesn't have to be just a uh, relation on P cross P. It could be a relation on P cross a whole set of objects, right? T, another set, okay? Okay, here's a relation that you're very familiar with. It's a symbol. It looks like a, an arrow, a, a carrot pointing one way. It usually means what? Less than. This is a relation on, uh, usually, um, if you like, since we haven't talked about all numbers, we'll just stick to integers, which are denoted by the letter Z. And so you're used to seeing this symbol used to say 7 is less than 10. That's a statement where the relation symbol lies between the two objects in the binary relation. Are you with me? Okay. That's all it means. But the way I want you to think about this is it's actually just a subset. I have described what a relation is completely in terms of something very basic, membership in a set. Are you with me? Okay, that's somehow, somehow comforting. Um, all right, good. So um, we have some uh, examples of relations. One of the most important examples of a relation is, in fact, something that you might have encountered in another course, and that's the concept of an equivalence relation. So the re equivalence relation on a set S is, well, it's a relation uh, on S cross S, whatever that is, such that, and I'm going to start abbreviating such that by ST. Such that three things hold. Uh, let's give this relation a name. Let me call it R. So, what does it mean to be an equivalence relation? Well, we want a, a, a word that somehow describes uh, relations that, uh, of things being equivalent to other things. Okay? So, for instance, equals is a natural equivalence relation, but there might be other kinds of equivalence relations, right? Um, an, a, another equivalence relation uh, might be something like, okay, um, all the sophomores in, uh, at the colleges are somehow, they're somehow equivalent, right? Okay, so what do you, if we want to make that notion precise, well, maybe they're not equivalent. You're debating that. <laughs> what, uh, what, what do you want to be true about an equivalence relation? Yes? Okay, so you're saying if A R B, then B R A. Okay, that's good. That is a, a one of the things on our list. It's not the simplest thing on our list, but it will it is one. So we want it to be the case that if A R B, this implies B R A. That is, uh, if the relation goes one way, then it goes the other. And we have a name for this. What do you think we call it? It's the symmetry relation. Okay. Um, there's a simpler one that you might demand uh, to start. Yes, remind me your name too. Laura. Laura. Things should be equivalent to themselves. Good, very good. So ARA better be true. Okay. And there's a name for this. Anybody know what it is? It's the reflexive condition. Okay. So uh, good. Uh, let's look at some of these relationships. Is A